making little coral pieces to add to your larger coral reef. What I did was I just pinched out some clay, smoothed it out to these bean-like shapes. You can really do any type of organic shape that you want. And then you can find found objects to press into the clay and see what kind of textures and designs they create. So these dots right here, all I did was I took a pencil and I took the pencil and I rocked it. And then because you're repeating it, it gives you that feel of a rock, a coral, um, Other found objects. So this is just a an anchor you put into the wall for your nails. I'm taking that and I'm pushing it because it has that double loop. And the deeper I press and rock, the more dimension I'll get. When I'm pushing into the clay, this clay I would say is leather. It's not super hard, but it's also not super squishy. If you're working with really squishy clay, the problem is that your tools that you press in will stick. So you want to make sure it's malleable, but not leather hard. If you want an even added textural element, this is where that slip trailing would be a factor. Um, so I did the pencil and then I'm going to come in with my bag of slip. I'm going to squeeze the slip out. And do that around my whole piece. Now this would be something you have to let harden up a little bit because that slip is still really wet. So you'd let that get a little bit more leather hard before you scored and slipped this on your uh, sculpture. So those are a couple different. So if I took shells and rock that, You might say a shell that's cheating, but not really. You're using your resources, you're using your found objects, and because that tip of the shell has such an interesting spiral, it creates a neat pattern. All different rock corally design ideas. Okay, balls of clay. You can use these for a lot of different coral barnacle effects. Um, one of the easiest things to do is once you roll the ball of clay in your hand, you're going to take a one of your modeling tools or even the back end of a pencil. You're going to pinch this a little and then you're going to push it around your rubber eraser or again, any kind of rounded tool because it'll give you different widths. Um, and then I let the, the end get a little um, skinnier. It's just a little more lifelike. And then you gently wiggle that out and then you have a barnacle. Um, you roll different ball sizes. So you'd get different barnacle sizes that you can then um, put on your sea life sculpture. So that's option one. Another thing you can do is take these little balls, pinch them, and press them on something that has an interesting texture. So as I've said, I have shells. You can find things in your house and press them around. And then you do have to be gentle with trying to wiggle this off, but then you have a texture within your barnacle. So then same idea, if you have different sizes and you repeat that, you can put that on your coral reef. You can take these balls and kind of patty cake them down a little bit 
If they start to crack for any reason, you can just dip your finger in a little bit of water, not a lot, because again, it's gonna get a little mushy. So that one got a little mushy on me. So I'm gonna do another one. And then you can use any of your plastic modeling tools or wooden modeling tools. This one's in your black tool case. And I'm gonna just make an X and then add that middle one. And you can do this, so plus X. These could then be put on as a flatter element around your coral. The other thing you could do is um, take the balls and score and slip them on one of your, your projects already. So you'd scratch up the area, add your slip, gently push them on. You might just like that for an element, but to add even more dimension and detail, we can go back to some of the other tools we used. Um, so this is the anchor for a wall. Um, and I'm just gonna push into that ball of clay and that'll get that dimension. You should be able to get the same effect with a pen, but it's gonna be a different width. So if you have smaller balls, and I'm gonna rock, and then you see kind of the difference. So these then look much more lifelike. So this is the idea of combining your different designs. If you are wanting tubular forms for coral that are kind of hollow on the inside, what you're gonna do is you're gonna start with a piece of clay or a slab of clay that's rolled really, 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 really flat. So if you can see that it's pretty, pretty skinny, it's not thick at all. I'm even gonna actually press this down a little more. If your clay is too thick, your tube is gonna be really thick and it's not gonna work very well. So once you flatten out, so even skinnier than like pancake thickness, you're then gonna find your wooden modeling tool or any type of rounded tool like a pencil or two and you're gonna roll the clay around that so i'm pressing and rolling a little bit your clay has to be pretty fresh pretty wet so it doesn't crack on you i'm gonna cut the excess so you almost have like a little taco i'm gonna push together the seams gently i'm not pushing very hard at all And then I'm gonna take this and roll it on the table, again, gently. So kind of like you're rolling a coil, but you're not pushing as hard. You're trying to just stretch that clay a little bit and get rid of that seam. So you can see there's no longer a seam there. And as you do this, the tool on the inside should loosen. And then you have your, your hollow log that you can go in and cut whatever height you want. When I cut this, I gently saw so I don't smush it. Um, my last step, I might, I don't, I want the top to be angled. And then I'll come in and run a sponge over it to soften those edges. Remember, we're trying to make things look lifelike. You don't wanna see any of the clay crumblies. But then you can make a bunch of these different heights and angle them as you attach them to your piece and you've got coral. If you want corally pieces that have movement to them, that maybe look like seaweed or different types of, um, you can connect them and have different corals kind of come together. What you're gonna do is you're gonna start with a chunk of clay you're going to roll it into a coil and then you're going to apply pressure on one end um, to taper that out. You can use your index finger, you can use a few fingers, or you can use the side of your hand. So that coil starts to taper, so it goes skinny, 
to thick. And then what you'll do is you're gonna get your hands wet. You're gonna run water over that coil and you'll see how it starts to smooth it out. This also rehydrates the clay and it allows it to be more um, malleable. So then what I'm gonna do is since I've added that water, I'm just slowly bending this and I keep adding and brushing that water to get a shape that I want. So you can see the end of it really, since it's pretty wet, it allows you to bend it whatever direction you want. If you start to bend it and you notice cracks, run your hand with some water over it and smooth out the crack. That's just telling you, the clay is just telling you it needs a little bit more water before you, you bend it more. Um, but then these, you can allow to get um, leather hard. And then once they're a little bit more leather to leather hard, you can apply them on your sculpture, however you envision, but then they'll stand up and have that lifelike element.